What happens when the bank won't accept your power of attorney? Hello, I am Don Rolfe, the owner and founder of Northwest Legal Planning, an estate planning and probate law firm located in West Lynn, Oregon, and this is episode 39 of Estate Planning Weekly. What happens when a bank won't accept your power of attorney? Well, essentially, uh, if a bank won't accept your power of attorney or another financial institution won't accept it, then you got to go to court. Uh, and let, let me tell you where this question comes from or where this topic comes from. Uh, I was just had a conversation this morning with a gentleman whose father has become uh, incapacitated. He has a will and a durable power of attorney and the son is the agent under their power of attorney and had gone to the bank to uh, get his name put on the account so he could pay dad's bills and make sure things are uh, gonna go smooth and the bank said, we're not going to accept this power of attorney because it's not on our form, plus it's, it's three years old. And the son wanted to know, what, what can I do? And in this scenario, the only option that he has is to go to court and petition to be appointed as conservator for his father and then get that court order saying that he has the authority uh, to manage his father's finances and affairs and assets and then take that order to the bank. And it's going to be a process that he's going to have to go through. They're going to have to pay court filing fees. They're going to have to pay probably an attorney, not me. I, I don't do conservatorships, but I did refer him out. Uh, they're going to have to pay an attorney. And what it all boils down to is that they thought that they had you know, the proper estate plan in place, and they did have the proper estate plan in place, but they didn't do the legwork that was absolutely necessary in order for a will and power of attorney plan to work. Um, before I get into how, how that works is, if, if you have any questions about this or any other estate planning topic, do feel free to reach out to me for a complimentary half hour estate planning strategy session where I can answer questions about this or any other estate planning topic and also talk to you about your estate planning options. And you can sign up for that by going to myestateplanmeeting.com and you can put yourself right on the calendar, on my calendar for either a telephone consultation or in person. So what should have been done uh, to, to cut this off and make sure that that power of attorney wasn't rejected by the financial institution. And, and this is something that I hear attorneys talking about all the time. It's something that comes up on our listservs, something that comes up when we uh, gather together for conferences and so forth is banks and other financial institutions not accepting powers of attorney, either because it's not on their form or it's, uh, it's old and stale, whatever the reason, if the bank's not gonna take it, they're not gonna take it. There's no law that compels them to take it. There are laws that allow them to rely upon that durable power of attorney, but if they choose not to, they don't have to. But here are the steps that you need to take if you're going to have a will-based plan and rely upon a power of attorney for any time that you're incapacitated. Once you have that power of attorney signed, take it to all of your financial institutions and make sure that they have a copy of it. If they need you to execute uh, a copy on their form, a durable power, power of attorney on their form, execute one of those, but you need to make sure if you're going to be relying upon a power of attorney to get it to them uh, soon, as soon as you execute it, as soon as you sign it, so that you know that they have it and they're going to honor it, either the one that you have signed and taken to them or one that they have you sign there at the bank or the other fi another financial institution. This is one of the reasons that a lot of people choose to do trust-based estate planning because the assets, the bank accounts, the investment accounts are going to be transferred to the name of your trust and it's going to be kind of like they're, they're held by a company. And if you become incapacitated, then your successor trustee steps in and they can be put on the account as the authorized user, uh, kind of like a company. Uh, if you know one president uh, retires and another president comes in, they go to the bank and change the paperwork to say that this new person is the president. They've executed all the corporate formalities to show that this person is the president. We do the same thing for the successor trustee. It makes it a lot smoother. But if you are relying upon a power of attorney, do take it into the financial institutions. Make sure that they know it exists. Make sure they have a copy of it. Make sure that they're going to honor it if the time comes that it that it needs to be used. Again, if you have questions about this 
or any other estate planning topic, do feel free to reach out to me and schedule a half hour complimentary consultation by going to myestateplanmeeting.com. So to sum it up, if you have a will-based estate plan and you're relying upon a power of attorney for incapacity planning, make sure that you have submitted that power of attorney to any institution, company, whatever it is that your agent may need to deal with if you become incapacitated. Again, my name is Don Rolf. If you like this, please hit the like button below, leave a comment. If you think this information could be helpful to someone you know, please share it with them. And until next time, take care. Goodbye.